All right, Rondell, you see a lot of different coverages week in and week out due to, you know, your ability to make plays with the ball in your hands and your ability to create space. Um, defensive coordinator is coming with their best game plans versus you. What are, type of coverages do you see and what are you familiar with? Um, I think in the Big Ten, you see a lot more zone, uh, specifically for us and myself. Um, you'll see some bracket coverage, and all that means is you got two guys um, in and out of you, really. So uh, vertical, um, they're robbing everything. Um, they're going to make it hard to get outside. We'll call this four trio. Um, four trio is basically where this nickel backer is playing outside you. This corner outside, uh, guarding this outside receiver is pretty much going to be manned up. So anything... I try to go outside, he's outside leverage, maintaining his outside leverage. There's a safety over top, he's riding everything vertical, and say if I gotta drive, then he takes me. Um, so they kinda in and out me there, um, and everyone else on my side, um, and they'll play a totally different defense to the other side, but this guy out here is basically manned up uh, with outside receiver. Gotcha. So talk to me about, everybody knows the traditional cover one, cover two, cover three, cover four. Talk to me about some combo coverages to defenses run, like quarter, quarter, half, or, you know, what you call 21 coverage and things of that nature. Yeah, uh, so just to get into uh, um, just coverages, obviously, you know, coverage zero, you're going to have zero safeties. Uh, it's going to be man coverage. I'm sure there's going to be some blitz. Um, so, you know, on the on the quarterback's eyes, you know, he has to get that out. And you as a receiver just have to know you got to get into your route early because they're probably going to bring more than we can block. Um, one, obviously, is going to be one safety high, um, still man coverage across the board. Um, same rules kind of apply there as well. Um, two, uh, cover two is two high safeties. Um, these outside corners are going to play in cloud coverage. Um, I think some some giveaways to cloud coverage for um, outside receivers is, is flat feet at five. So if they're sitting at about five yards um, on both sides, that's an indicator for cloud. Um, I think they do a great job in college of kind of... Um, this guy's <coughs> but the safeties will usually be off the hash. So safety here, safety here, uh, responsibility is over the top, over the top. And like I said, he's in cloud coverage here. So um, for our purposes in cover two, I mean, we like verticals. Um, that's really the beater unless they drop this mic out of here, uh, which would be Tampa to most people. But when he's in cloud um, and say you got four verts, um, obviously he's going to be here. Obviously he can hit a whole shot. If he's not over the top, um, we have a seam ball here, so we call this two-on-one ball. You got two verts and you got a safety, so that's two-on-one ball. Um, that's cover two. That's really the basis of it. Um, three uh, is going to be one high safety. There's variations of three. I mean, there's three sky, there's three buzz, three boundary. Um, and all that really means is, is what safety on the, on the strong side, the weak side, is rotating or buzzing. Um, so that's all those terms mean. Um, Cover three, these guys are going to be, they can be pressed up. Um, it'll look like man across the board. Most of the time, that's how they disguise it. But a good indicator here is the eyes of everyone. Um, so everyone across the board is going to have zone eyes. Um, that could be, your pre-snap read will probably look like man to you, just depending on if this guy staring at you. Um, I like to look at my triangle. That's the guy over me, uh, the guy most inside, and the guy over top. So uh, when I do my triangle read, I kind of try to, look at the uh, eyes of safeties and backers and see where their eyes are. Four um, is also going to be uh, two high safeties. These two safety splits here are going to be a little tighter. Um, what we call these corners out here, uh, MES. And MES just means man except shallow. So uh, he's really going to man you up here, but he's, he's got a he's got a, a quarter here, a quarter here, a quarter here, a quarter here. So he's deep, he's deep, he's out, he's out. Um, these are probably third and long, um, third and long calls. You'll see some some four or quarters, uh, depending on what you call it. Uh, I think those are the main uh, coverages, one through zero through four, and then you get into some variations uh, like you talked about. Quarter, quarter, half is just cover five, and cover five is just four to the field, two to the boundary. Um, so, say for say this is this is the boundary. You're gonna see two over here, and like I mentioned earlier. This corner is going to be in cloud coverage. A lot of times they like to sit at seven, um, cocked with their butt to the sideline. Um, and at the snap, they like to roll up at five. That's another indicator of three um, with their butt to the sideline is cover three. But And then it's going to be uh, four to the field, and that is quarter, quarter, half. And by quarter, quarter, half, that's just talking about what zone they have. So they're here, they're here, and then 
He's going to have a half of the field, so this is going to be two over here, two over here. Gotcha. Talk to me about the importance of route integrity and splits, and the difference in splits and things in the formation can make a difference in the defense adjustment. Um, I think um, there's, well, DBs who study and watch a lot of film uh, do a great job of finding little indicators within concepts or receivers that help them um, get past breakups or, you know, interceptions. So, uh, you know, if you have a slant, you don't want to be extremely wide. You know, there's not enough room on the sideline for the quarterback to get the ball out there. For you to go vertical, you got to be running something inside. He'll stay inside uh, really hard, um, making it really hard for you to run the slant. And, um, you know, that doesn't, doesn't help the quarterback. So, I mean, splits are important. Um, route discipline is a big one just because of the timing. Uh, I think that's a big thing with college balls. You don't even have to be the best route runner to get open. It's more so timing and understanding responsibilities and holes that'll be open. So, um, you know, with curls, um, you know, in some offenses, um, most curls are 12 yards, 12 back to the quarterback. Um, and you probably have a flat control, something holding the flat out here to get this back out of this window to throw a curl. But um, you, you've got to be disciplined here. Uh, you may not be the first read. You could be backside. Say if the... Um, the coverage is whatever, and um, the concept over here is the side he wants to work on, and there's a 15, 16 yard uh, dig backside. If you run your route at 12, uh, you're gonna be here, and his eyes are gonna be here. Um, if you run your route too deep, he's getting backside, and he's still waiting on you, so then he has to scramble. So, I mean, there are a lot of um, things around route discipline and understanding splits and just understanding the timing out there. Gotcha. Um, what's your favorite route? And show me three different ways that you can win in different coverages or some or different kind of press man man looks. Yeah, um, so my favorite route personally is um, a slant, honestly. And, you know, it all depends on, uh, like you said, what coverage you get. So say you've got a, a DB here, um, I'm here. Obviously, the traditional way to run a slant, um, if you get off coverage, he starts backing up, is literally just a slant. Cool, we got that. Um, personal favorite of mine when I get press, um, I like to sell the illusion that I'm going inside hard, get him to turn his hips, throw him by like I'm running vertical. If he man turns or zone turns, um, he's still wrong because I'm still crossing his face. So, uh, this is personally my favorite. We call this in out in. Talk to me about that angle that you're coming out in. Um, that angle I, looks different than the other angles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No? Um, I think it all depends. Um, I think when you teach a slant, it's 45 degrees out of your cut, but. It all depends on the, where the backer is, um, if the guy's on your back. Uh, I think it all depends. But here, um, flatter is probably safer just because it's not going to be ex as explosive. Uh, you're changing directions twice. So just to be safe, I would keep this a little flatter. Um, it all just depends. Down and distance plays a huge role. But, you know, who's inside? Um, you know, if you got a – it's one, and, you know, you see the safety's been robbing the whole game, you know, uh, with slants. He, the Q is probably going to try to look the backer off, but if it's quick game, he's probably going to get it, and it's going right to you. Um, so, I mean, it just depends. You want to protect yourself from this backer. The Q will do a good job of that, putting the ball on you. But um, there's really no rule of thumb as to the angle. It just depends on how they're playing you. But as far as uh, how I like slants, uh, the traditional three-step, whatever angle, 45, usually um, in, out, in. And then this this is a safe one. This is one I run in red zone, um, you know, when it's, uh, they know you're not running to go. Um, they're going to sit inside. They're not going to move. And this is on the goal line. They like to catch on the goal line as well if they're not impressed. But um, they're going to be patient. They're not going to let you get inside. So if the ball's in here, uh, the defender's right here. I like to, it looks almost like this, but this is um, a little different. So with this here slant, I'm just getting in there. Pushing vertical, leaning against them, and breaking away. So mm -hmm. they look kind of similar. But so we're talking about an inside release on that? Yeah, just inside releasing, um, like I said, this is really on the goal line. Uh, this corner isn't going to move, so if you sell them outside, you're going to get stuck out there. And not be so what are you trying to space. make that look like? Um, you're just trying to get in there quick, or are you selling, are you selling some kind of route in that release, or are you just trying to dive inside and get inside of them? Yeah, it's really just a dive release. I gotcha. mean, it's a slant. What are the key points on that right there? Like, you're coaching a young receiver, what would you tell them to do? Uh, one, you got to get your shoulder dip uh, so he doesn't jam you up. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think there necessarily has to be a release. You have to get in there quick. Uh, you got to push vertical back against them. So fight tension with tension, lean back against them. 
and try to get him, get you to uh, make him think you're trying to get back outside and you stick away. Um, and I, like I said, this is really on the, on the goal line when they're hard inside. Uh, so uh, those are really the three different ways. I mean, there's another way you can run a slant as well. Um, this, is, this is a good one for me. Um, I like to push vertical a little bit, get on his toes, sell, fade, or go and then stick right across his face. So now obviously for speed purposes, I'm sure that's a good one because a lot of people are scared of your speed. What, is that right that you ran 4-3-2 um, or 4-3-3 three, three at the opening? Yeah, I ran 4-3-3 uh, three, three at the opening. Is that laser time? Yeah, that was laser. Um, How old were you at the time you ran that? Uh, probably like, I was in high school my senior year, uh, 17. 17 years old. Yeah. But, so I can imagine, like, you know, people, a lot of you use terrified of speed. You see a lot of corners trying to run out of there. Yeah, um, and another way for that, man, is just uh, zone it up. Um, so uh, that or they'll play cover three. And like I said, that's – but to the sideline, uh, press bell is a big one. Um, so they're just trying to get out of there. So now there are a lot of guys that say, you know, because of your size, that you're just an inside receiver and all you can do is play the H or play the slot. Um, I watch you in games, like in Vanderbilt games, you're going outside, catching the slam ball, like you said, you're catching the goal right outside and stuff like that. And it seems that, you know, your strength is really your release points and, and press coverage and stuff like that. So talk to me how you offset your size to still be able to win outside. And, and obviously, with your knowledge of the game, how that translates into you being able to find ways and being able to be creative to win outside, despite your size. Um, I think the, the biggest thing with uh, not being a 6'4", six, 6'2", six, uh, receiver is that you know, they've had success in the league or in college or whatever. Um, just finding different ways to be savvy. I mean, like you said, my knowledge, uh, my strength. Um, sometimes you can't control what genes you're born with. So, I mean, some guys just aren't the fastest. Luckily, I was born with a little speed. So, you know, I can run. Um, I got some lower body strength, some upper body strength. So I think those kind of offset, uh, making people miss in space is, is a good thing there. And, you know, just being savvy and understand what's going on. Uh, I think those are some key points. When you like to see press coverage, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it all depends on the route, but I love seeing press because um, 90... So you 80, like press? Yeah, 99% of the time you can't run with me. Uh, you don't know my route. Uh, obviously, I'm a receiver or a DB, so um, kind of just keep you guessing. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. Um, one last question for you. When you study defensive backs, what are you looking for and how do you recognize tendencies? Like you, you got game prep, right? You got to see Nebraska first game of the year. You and Wanda Robinson, another one of your counterparts that you train with, um, other fellow receiver and stuff. What are you looking for out of those Nebraska corners? Have you broken down any tape with those guys? Have you took a pick at them yet? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, with COVID-19 going on, things have been a little odd. Uh, coaches have got some film to us. Um, I think the biggest thing with watching DBs is you, you go to the cut-ups that they provide and you watch every route and see what they do. Um, do they have a favorite hand that they like to use to jam? Uh, quick jam guys, hard press guys. What is, what is like quick jam guy? What does that mean? Uh, quick jam is really just some quick hands just to get you to uh, waste some time at the line so the D line has more time to you know, get to the quarterback. Um, there's some guys who press bail. Um, they're going to press you up and they're going to get out there, get out on the snap. Uh, so you just got to find out what kind of corner they are. You know, are they hitters? Are they, they cover guys? You know, I think there's variations of the ball. I mean, how long they've been playing, what kind of experience do they have. So when you get ready to play versus a big physical corner, what are you thinking about all week in practice? What are you thinking that you need to be good with your what? Uh, my feet and my hands. Um, I Talk to me about your hands. I, I know we did a lot of talking about your feet, but what do you mean with your hands? Um, I mean, a Is it like thing. catching the ball? What do, you, what do you mean by that? Does it mean violent hands at the line of scrimmage? What, what does that mean? Yeah, um, just having uh, efficient hands. And when I say efficient, I mean understanding just points that move on a person. I mean, uh, running an outside release and I'm, I'm swimming, um, you want to hit him where, where his arm bends. So you really want to aim elbow, um, wrist, here it doesn't really bend, um, but you want to be violent and hopefully they just get the message that you know, stop pressing you. And then at that point, um, you're going to let me do what I do best and that's run. Gotcha. So what about a soft press look, guys, to try to play shadow press and try to stay on top of the routes and stuff like that? What do you like to do with those guys? Like, how do you get those guys' toes that's just trying to get out of there? Like, when you yeah, so, take traditional two <clears throat> release? Uh, soft press guys, uh, I think there are two different things to do with those guys. Uh, when you say soft press, um, I think of three a little, it's not press, but you know, they'll start in three um, and they'll bail out with their butts at the sidelines. So uh, we talk about blind spots, you wanna get blind spots um, and you wanna get on the toes, they're fast. 
to make them make a decision. Like I said, they don't know the route you have, so um, they have a responsibility as well. And so if they're in thirds or if they're in press and it's man coverage and it's, say it's one, um, they know they don't want to get beat over the top. So um, that's the reason for soft press guys. They don't want to get beat over the top. More than likely, they're going to be on their heels. So if you get on their toes fast and you know be decisive with your, with your moves, um, I think you'll be successful.